Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone on today? I want to bring you some information about the 1955 warrant for Carolyn Bryant Dun Dunham. Now, this is 70 years later. And so um, there was um, a team and they were searching a Mississippi courthouse basement for evidence about the lynching of black teenager Emmett Till. And they found this unserved warrant charging this woman, this white woman, in 1955, uh, in his night, excuse me, in his 1955 kidnapping. And relatives of the victim, they want authorities to finally arrest her nearly 70 years later. And I have to stop right here and say, yes, they still should. I know there's laws in place and they may say that it's been expired and it's too long, and but they need to issue a new a warrant. I, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think they need to issue a new warrant and attach the old warrant uh, if they're not able to arrest her because she does need to be arrested. This man definitely needs to have justice. I mean, his family needs to have justice and justice needs to be served. And, you know, uh, getting back to this article, it says a warrant for the arrest of Carolyn Bryant Donham, identified as Mrs. Roy Brant on the document was discovered last week by searchers inside a file folder that had been placed in a box. LaFleur County Circuit Clerk Elma Stocksteel told the Associated Press on Wednesday, let's stop right there. So somebody didn't want her to be served so what they did is they decided, and we going I'm gonna tell you what the article said. I'm gonna tell you, then I'm gonna read it. But it basically she had two small children, so they left her alone. But what about all the black families that have children, but they don't leave them alone? What about the situation where you know someone's done wrong, and uh, they don't arrest them? They give them leniency, they extend grace to them, and they allow them to live their life and go on about their business. But yet and still, this family of uh, Mr. Till, Emmett Till, is still grieving the loss of their son. Now, the documents are kept inside boxes by decade, he said, but there was nothing else to indicate where the warrant dated August 29th, 1955, might have been. They narrowed it down between the 50s and 60s and got lucky, says Stock Steel, who certified the warrant as genuine. Yeah, you know that warrant was genuine, but somebody decided they weren't going to do their job because she, remember, had two small children and they were going to leave her alone. But she still needs to be held accountable for what she done. And that means arresting her. And if they have to get a new warrant out for her arrest, they need to because justice has never been served and Mr. Emmett Till's family have never received closure or justice for the killing of their son, the illegal killing, actually the murder of their son. So the search group included members of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation and two Till relatives, cousin Deborah Watts, head of the foundation and her daughter, Terry Watts. Relatives want authorities to use the warrant to arrest Donham, who at the time of the slam was married to one of two white men tried and acquitted just weeks after Till was abducted uh, abducted, excuse me, abducted from a relative's home, killed and dumped into a river. Serve it and charge her, Terry Watts told the AP in an interview. Keith Bochamp, whose documentary film, The Untold Story of Emmett T Lewis Till, preceded a renewed Justice Department probe that ended without charges in 2007, was also part of the search. He said there is enough new evidence to prosecute Donham. He said that there's enough new evidence. We need to go get her, go pick her up, take her in and charge her. That's what needs to happen. We want justice for Emmett Till and we haven't quit and neither has the family. And, um, uh, Don Ham set off the case in August 1955 by accusing a 14-year-old Till of making improper advances at a family store in Money, Money, Mississippi. A cousin of Till who was there has said Till whistled at the woman an act that flew in the face of Mississippi's racist social codes of the air. Evidence indicates a woman, possibly Don Ham, identified Till to the men who later killed him. The arrest warrant against Don Ham was publicized at the time. 
but the LaFleur County Sheriff told reporters he did not want to bother the woman since she had two young children to care for. So is, La, is the sheriff uh, of that county, of LaFleur County, is he still alive? Because he didn't want to bother her. But yet and still, here is a young man, a 14-year-old, that didn't get to reach his 18th birthday, that didn't even get to decide what he wanted to be or do, uh, what he wanted to be or uh, do in life. Family members have lost it, their relatives. The mother lost her child at a young age because this woman, Carolyn Bryant Donham, you know, lied. She went after this young man by having her husband and another man go after him. And you have the LaFleur County Sheriff saying he did not want to bother her because she had two young children. This woman is now in her 80s, Carolyn Bryant Donham, and most recently living in North Carolina. Donham is not coming to public calls for her prosecution. Well, would you if she knows she's guilty and she doesn't want to go to jail in her 80s? But Terry Watts said the Till family believes the one accusing Donham of kidnapping amounts to new evidence. And you know she did come out and say she lied and apologized, I believe, but however, that still, there's some accountability that needs to happen and we want justice. Not just the Teal family, but we all that's been following this story that, uh, that are aware of it want justice. And so it goes on this article to say, this is what the state of Mississippi needs to go ahead, she said. District Attorney Dwayne Richardson, whose office would prosecute a case declined to comment on the warrant, but cited a December report about the Teal case from the Justice Department, which said no prosecution was possible. Then they need to take it on up then, pass, bypass. They need to bypass Attorney Dwayne Richardson then, but they need to take it all the way up. And so contacted by the AP on Wednesday, LaFleur County Sheriff Ricky Banks said, this is the first time I've known about a warrant. Banks, who was seven years old when Teal was killed, said nothing was said about a warrant when a former district attorney investigated the case five or six years ago. Either he covered it up, the investigator that investigated it five or six years ago, or he saw it and he put it aside because he figured it didn't matter. A lack of regard. But again, that's not right to have a lack of regard for someone's life. And we're talking about another human being's life. Now, the article says, I will see if I can get a copy of the warrant and get with the DA and get their opinion on it, Banks said. If the warrant can still be served, Banks said he would have to talk to law enforcement officers in the state where Don Ham resides. resides. After warrants can go stale due to the passage of time and changing circumstances, and one from 1955 almost certainly wouldn't pass muster before a court, even if a sheriff agreed to serve it, said Ronald J. Uh, Rich Lack a law professor at the University of Mississippi. But combined with new evidence, the original arrest warrant absolutely could be an important stepping stone toward, excuse me, toward establishing probable cause for a new prosecution, he said. And that's what I was saying, that with the old information, the old warrant, original ballot warrant, and new information attached the old ballot warrant, you know, to the new warrant, uh, warrant, and let's get moving here. Now, if you went in front of a judge, you could say once upon a time, a judge determined there was probable cause and much more information is available day today, Rich Lex said. Now, Till, who was from Chicago, was visiting relatives in Mississippi, if you don't recall the story. He entered the store with Don Ham then. She was 21, was working on August 24th, 1955. A Till relative who was there, Wheeler Parker, told AP that Till whistled at the woman. Donham testified in court that Teal also grabbed her and made a lewd comment. Two nights later, Donham's then husband, Roy Bryan, and his half-brother, J.W. Uh, Milam, showed up armed at the rural LaFour County home of Teal's great-uncle, Most Wright, looking for the youth. Teal's brutalized body, weighed down by a fan, weighted down by a fan, was pulled from a river days later in another county. Look at that. They even took it to another county, his body, to cover up the evidence. 
Now, his mother's decision to open the Catholics on Mourners, Mourners in Chicago could see what had happened helped galvanize the building civil rights movement of the time. Brian and Millen were acquitted of murder, but later admitted the killing in a magazine interview. While both men were named in the same warrant that accused Donham of kidnapping, authorities did not pursue the case following their acquittal. Wright testified during the murder trial that a person with a voice lighter than a man's identified Teal from inside a pickup truck and the abductors took him away. Other evidence and FBI files indicate that earlier that same night, Donham told her husband at least two other black men were not the right person. Now, see, she lied. Teal's guilty of kidnapping. She played a part in this, man, and she definitely needs to be held accountable. And for us to um, think that this is too old, if you do think that, I don't think that. In my opinion, she still needs to be arrested, even at 80 years old. And when you look at these cases where they're going back 30, 40, 50 years, harassing men and uh, holding them accountable for things that were consensual uh, and things that they could have had an opportunity back then to bring charges against a, a so-called accuser or perpetrator. And in this case, we need to bring some charges. Those charges need to be brought against this woman. She does need to be arrested. She needs to be handcuffed and arrested in her home in North Carolina. And she needs to be taken in. I mean, like, I don't understand the problem with how it's so many loopholes when it comes to Black people and how many times that they, uh, prosecutors can find loopholes to go around these laws here to convict Black people, and especially Black men, like they're a hot commodity because they are a threat to certain communities, but yet and still, we can't even get justice for Emmett Till. And now that they have found uh, the warrant, and then uh, 70 years later, which was hidden, and I do believe it was hidden, and it was placed there intentionally for someone or people not to find it or locate it, but God, I keep telling you all that God continues to expose what's done in the dark shall be brought to the light. And I stand on this with everything in my being, because it happens. And after 70 years, a warrant has surfaced, surfaced by a team searching in a courthouse Mississippi basement, in a Mississippi basement courthouse, or a Mississippi courthouse basement, if you will. And so I do believe that this woman needs to be brought to justice. She does need to be brought to justice. And, um, you know, it just, it's really just really really sad that we have to keep fighting to get anything done. And so prayers for the family that's standing up, that's holding up to this, that have been, uh, you know, dealing with this for decades, you know, they haven't been able to get closure. That's a lack of regard, a lack of compassion, even a lack of mercy on the family that have lost their loved one. And so I say what I say, and, uh, Anytime that you participate in murder, you have blood on your hands and God is still in the midst of these things. He still sits high and looks low. He's still sitting up on the throne and he has revealed this warrant and there was a petition going around. I don't know if it's still out there. So if you haven't signed it, please do. But in the meantime, we want to see justice served. We want the Emmett Till's family to get the justice that they have been seeking for many decades. Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to like the video, to subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, share this video because it's so important that this family gets justice and Emmett Till's life mattered. At 14 years old, his life mattered. And we know that there were some laws in place back then, and those laws were nothing but racist laws. They were not legal laws. They were illegal laws that people just made up things and put them out there and the folks acted upon it. And so therefore, uh, you know, we need to uh, see justice being done. We need justice and we're going to speak on this and continue to bring it up. And um, we want justice and uh, an apology is not enough. She may have apologized. I don't know if she's repented and asked for forgiveness. That's between her and her God. But the God I serve, he says that he is a fair and just God. And I'm standing on the promises of God. And I do believe that he's going to continue to expose 
all of the evil doers, all of the evil that's being done, he's going to continue to expose these people. Um, and so thank you for tuning in, you know, and uh, copyright disclaimer is right there for you to view. And the opinions expressed on this channel is not necessarily the opinions of others or of this channel. So I tell you one thing, don't give up. Get your head up if you're holding it down. And if you got your head up, keep it up. Stand tall and know that God's got you. God bless you all. Peace out.